What would the cast of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX play in the modern day? Let's be honest, GX came out 20 years ago. So, of course, the decks the characters played back then are going to be a little bit outdated by modern day standards. However, unlike Dual Monsters, GX is a time period where characters started to focus on archetypal decks. Because of this, despite how much the game has changed over the years, a lot of the decks from that era remain fan favourites. And as such, due to favouritism, they've aged quite gracefully, since they've got a few bits and pieces of legacy support over the years. An example of a deck like this would be something like Cyber Dragon. It was popular when the deck came out, it was quite good when the deck came out as well, and so it still has tons of new support in the modern day. Of course! There are also some decks have just never had any love, and they've been neglected over the years. And as such, these abysmal abominations, perhaps they don't deserve support, but they definitely need it. They might need another 20 years to get the support they need to make them competitively viable or anything like that. Regardless of that though, for today, I want to take a look at what if the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX characters remade their decks in the modern day. What they look like? What monsters did they play that have brand new upgraded forms? And for the characters that didn't get their decks made into the real world, or just simply do not have enough support to make their decks viable, what deck could we give them that fits their theme, I guess? So, without further ado, let's start with Jaden Yuki. Jaden's deck went through some serious changes throughout the course of the series. He started with his elemental heroes, and then he transitioned into the Neospatians, and then towards the end it was kind of a mishmash of the both, elemental heroes and Neospatians working side by side. Luckily for Jaden, elemental heroes, they're very, very popular. And so, they receive tons of legacy support. This means Jaden can easily build a modern hero deck. Quite easily, actually. For obvious reasons, I'm going to lock him out of the Destiny Heroes, the Evil Heroes, and the Vision Heroes, since they belong to other characters. For the rest of this video, just assume I want characters to play a kind of pure version of the archetypes or themes that they played in their decks. Regardless of losing out on these archetypes, he still has access to his Elemental Heroes, Neospatians, and the Masked Heroes. Masked Heroes, if you didn't know, were the deck that Jaden used in the manga. He borrowed Elemental Heroes of another character called Koyo Hibiki, and then when he wanted to forge his own path, he had the Masked Heroes. Now, with these three archetypes in his deck, he has some seriously good cards. First of all, Jaden's favourite hero, Flame Wingman, has a modern day version of itself called Elemental Hero Flame Wingman Infernal Rage. We also have new Neos forms that are very, very good, like Shining Neos Wingman or Cosmo Neos. We also have bonkers cards like Wake Up Your Elemental Heroes or Elemental Hero Sunrise, which is a great way to get Miracle Fusion straight to your hand. Miracle Fusion in hand, just merge with cards in the graveyard. You can put Absolute Zero on the field or whatever you want to do. Plenty of options. And of course, with the Masked Heroes, we also have access to cards like Dark Lore, which is basically a floodgate. Any card sent to the graveyard is banished. And then if your opponent tries to add a card to their hand, uh, 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 you get to banish a card from their hand as well. Essentially, just like it was in the anime, Jaden's modern day deck has a variety of fusion monsters that can deal with a variety of different situations. And from my time of playing with this deck on Ranked, well, you realize that this deck is all gas. What do I mean by that? Basically, if your opponent doesn't interrupt an elemental hero player, they will not stop. They will just keep going and going and going until they've won in a single turn. They're, they're kind of nuts. And I even took this deck to a tournament at one point and I did really well. I won every single one of my duels on the first day. I was quite impressed with myself. I didn't think I'd do that well. Or if you don't want to obliterate your opponent in a single turn, use a card like Cosmo Neos. It's disgusting. Do you know what it does? It stops the opponent from playing after it's summoned. Thanks to its effect, which is when it's fusion summoned, for the rest of this turn, the opponent can activate cards. Also cards your opponent controls can activate their effects. It's important to point out as well, Jaden is allowed to keep his super polymerization card in this deck. There are some generic hero monsters that he could use super polymerization for. Use with the opponent's, I don't know, dark monster to make a elemental hero Eskari Dao. Or just in general, it's a nice quick play fusion card that Jaden could use. And I mean, if Jaden ever goes against another hero player, let's just say he plays the modern day Aster Phoenix, super polymerization, 
fuse with the plasma, whatever you want to do. You can make some decent monsters with that as well. Like many of the decks today as well, I will say we should salute our fallen heroes, literally. There's a lot of the original hero monsters that probably won't see any play in modern decks. Think the original elemental heroes, some of the original fusion monsters as well. It is a shame, but it's just the way of the times, really. You just gotta adapt or die, I guess. <laughs> Supreme King. Yes, I decided to put this character as a separate thing, as a what if? What if Jaden never conquered the gentle darkness? What if he never regained his sense of self? Well, he'd remain as the Supreme King. And what did the Supreme King play? An evil hero deck. So what would the Supreme King play in modern day? A modern day evil hero deck. Now, I'll be honest, they are nowhere near as well supported as the elemental heroes. In fact, since the evil heroes come out, they've only had four new support cards since their initial release. That's not great. The cards that they got though, pretty decent. They got a big new boss monster called Evil Hero Malicious Bane. Really good boss monster. They also have new evil versions of some iconic cards like Sinister Necrom, a Dusted Gold, and even a Supreme King Castle Field Spell. It's not amazing, but it's pretty good. This is an archetype that definitely needs a bit more support if they want to play pure, basically. But I think it's only fair that we let the Supreme King play the Elemental Heroes and the Evil Heroes in this deck, since... Technically, Supreme King did have the Elemental Heroes in his own deck. How else was he going to make cards like Wild Cyclone and Inferno Wing? And though they were sinister versions of the Elemental Heroes, I think it only makes sense. Oh, and of course, he would play Super Polymerization because, you know, it's his signature card. And with that, to be fair, he can fuse with the opponent's monsters to make some of his bigger monsters. So, pretty good. You bell What would you bell play in the modern day? A Ubel deck. That is an easy one to answer. If you'd have asked a few months ago, I'd have said a modern day Ubel deck wouldn't have worked because it's only three cards. But they got a ton of new support, which makes them really, really good. Which, conveniently, I covered in a very recent video. The big new cards is Ubel has a brand new ultimate boss monster called Ubel Loving Defender Forever. Also, a new main deck Ubel monster, which is Spirit of Ubel, homage to Spirit of Neos. Neos. Jaden's signature card in his deck. Ubel. It's the whole thing. I, I covered it in this video. I won't go too much into detail. Not only that, though, but all of the non Ubel cards that Ubel played in a final duel, well, there's remakes for that that support the Ubel archetype. And to top it off, this is the third character in a row where super polymerization is actually a core part of their deck. Like, this is actually mentioned in some of the cards within this archetype. You can use a card like Mature Chronicle to actually add super polymerization to your hand for its final effect. That's really cool. And the reason you want to do that, you can fuse with your entire opponent's board to make your own ultimate boss monster loving defender forever. Well, you don't want to mute merge with everything. So what you want to do is you fuse with everything but one monster and then you crash your monster into their monster. So you deal damage. Or if you want to be even cleverer, you can wait for them to do their plays, go into their battle phase, and then activate super polymerization. Or even better, just summon the original U Bell. Your opponent will then be forced to attack into U Bell if you have the continuous spell on the field. Everything attacks into your monster, and if you're really lucky, you could win on that turn during your opponent's battle phase. It's really cool. Really like this archetype. I'm glad I got support. Aster Phoenix. So, I might as well mention this now. Here's the problem with hero decks. Hero decks benefit the most from having all the different hero archetypes smushed together into one deck. Basically, you pick the best things in each of these categories, put them into one deck together, and you make this amalgamation hero deck, which is really, really good. A great example of this is like Elemental Hero Stratos. This works with every single type of hero archetype. So it's this is kind of like the glue that binds them all together. So when I say that Asta in the modern day would play a pure destiny hero deck with some vision heroes thrown in since vision heroes was the archetype he played in the manga. No, deep down that I do agree restricting the characters to pure versions of their decks might seem a little bit limiting sometimes. However, for the purposes of this video, I think it makes sense for anime characters forced into the modern day, they still would stick to their archetypes within the universe that they're in. I know we're using real world decks and everything, but I think for this, yeah, they'd play 
their archetype because if they didn't play their archetype in a pure form they could just play anything they could just start playing telements snake eyes all this stuff labyrinth like who cares about my signature deck i'll just play the the top meta deck so that's my logic behind it anyway that's my little restriction we're, we're keeping them as pure as possible basically saying all that though destiny heroes have some very decent new support cards like d time which help you get out plasma and make him an absolute powerhouse really really good card we obviously have some new hero cards that you could obviously play but the best thing of all about a destiny hero deck is you get to play a card called fusion destiny this is one of the best fusion cards in the game basically lets you fuse from the deck and if you're playing a hero deck the monster you're gonna get out let's be honest with you is the ultimate destiny hero monster destiny hero destroyer phoenix enforcer this card just won't die pop a card on the opponent's field pop itself it comes back during the next standby phase you just do that forever and because it's in a hero deck now for every hero in the graveyard i think the opponent's monsters lose 100 or 200 attack each so they're gonna have like no attack is very good card and of course what's even cooler is asta has access to the vision heroes there's only three important main deck vision heroes we can focus on which is vion faris and increase you can do some decent stuff with them my favorite is the extra deck monster Vision Hero Trinity. I really like this monster. It can boost its attack up to 5,000. It can attack three times, which sometimes can be an instant win. And especially if you have... Oh, no, I guess you can't play Honest Neos. That's a good way of getting that even stronger. Like a guaranteed OTK and everything. But yeah, it's a really good card. I really like it. Cyrus Truesdale. Cyrus played a Vehicroid deck. In the modern day, he would also play a Vehicroid deck. Fun fact about modern day Vehicroid deck. It's still trash. Yeah, it's had some support with cards like Stealth Base, Mixeroid, Dragonroid, and Megaroid City. But at the end of the day, it still can't win duels. How do I know this? Well, I made a video on them talking all about the cards and their problems and stuff. You can check that out if you want to. More importantly, I played this deck on Master Duel for an entire month on the competitive ladder. And oh boy, did they struggle. They're no good. It's... They need so much more new support, and there's some core integrated problems with the archetype itself. I'll give you the best example. You know their signature fusion card, Vehicroid Connection Zone, right? Out of the seven fusion monsters that they have, you can only summon like two monsters out of the seven. You'd have to watch the video, and I, I know more about it there, but it's just insane. That's their like in archetype fusion card, and it doesn't work for like 80% of the fusion monsters the fact that they're competing with the speedroids which fun fact if v cyrus doesn't want to play the vehicroids you can play the speedroid archetype instead it's got roid in the name you can put express roid in this deck and it actually still kind of works and it's like toy theme so it kind of fits cyrus's theme and everything so you could do that if you want to but the moral of the story is um the only good cards in roids I would say to throw them a bone is Pear Psychroid, since it's generic and it can attack directly and it can be boosted. It's not too bad. And I quite like Barbaroid. The problem with Barbaroid is it's too hard to get out. If they ever get their in archetype overload fusion card, then that would make it good because it's an easier way of getting it out. But for the time being, the trash. Zane Truesdale. Zane has options with what he wants to play. He can either play a modern day Cyber Dragon deck or a modern day Cyber Dark Dragon deck, or he can mix the two together to play one singular deck, which can get out an insane boss monster. This deck has been supported very heavily, and it's one of my favorite decks. And the reason why it got supported so much is because it's a lot of people's favorite decks. It's got tons of legacy support. The best part about a modern day Cyber Dark deck is that you don't actually have to play level three dragons in the deck to fuel the Cyber Darks. It was a big hindrance back in the day. You had to play these weird level threes to even make them viable. But now the Cyber Darks have their own in archetype Cyber Dark Dragon type monsters with beneficial effects for the archetype as well. So it's really good. The Cyber Dragons themselves have so many options. They have a Link monster Cyber Dragon, Sega, very good. Two new Xyz monster forms, Nova and the really, really amazing Infinity, which lets you suck up an opponent's monster and then you can negate an effect every turn. It's really good. Also have new powerful Chimera Tech monsters, which the best one being Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon, just lets you push for game, wipe your opponent's back row, attack three times, profit. And if you double its attack with myriad of ways to increase its attack, 
Definitely going for the game there. And you can wipe your opponent's field with two very specific cards. Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon, which obviously can be used against you. Not great. But you can also use Chimera Tech Mega Fleet Dragon, which helps you get rid of your opponent's Link Monsters. And if they ever make the U-Link, where they can get two Link Monsters in both extra monster zones, you can merge with two of those. Very rare, but it's, it's a possibility. And also with new searcher cards, powerful new Cyber Fusion Monsters, and of course, new fusion based cards as well and an insanely new and powerful boss monster which is of course a homage to cyber dark dragon when it equips cyber end dragon to itself this thing is really good boss monster it's near unkillable unless you got like a kaiju or something basically zane has a lot of options they're probably only going to get more support in the future as well cyber dragons will do well for zane in the modern day alexis Rhodes. now alexis played a cyber angel deck and they haven't had a ton of support in the modern day. There's enough of them that you can play a Cyber Angel deck. I mean, like, Ben 10 is an insanely good ritual monster. I guess the problem with Cyber Angels is she would do best to merge her deck with some other archetypes to make it a little bit better. And, like, one of the best ritual monsters you can put in a Cyber Angel deck is something like Herald of Perfection. It's an insanely broken card unless you just keep negating cards' effects and become very overpowered she's had new cards like cyber angel natasha vrash izana some new support cards as well yeah you could play a modern day cyber angel deck they could do with a bit more support but could you play it yeah yeah you could atticus rhodes so atticus played a red eyes black dragon deck in the modern day sure you can play a red eyes black dragon deck now i can see atticus playing Red Eyes Black Dragon since that was his deck. Whereas when I did the Joey Wheeler thing, I said I would prefer him to play Flame Swordsman since I know Red Eyes was always his boss monster, but he never really had too many support cards for the Red Eyes. He could he turned the Red Eyes into like armor and stuff every now and then. He had like Black Skull Dragon as well. It was that Yugi's card? I think that was Yugi's card actually. My bad. <laughs> I can see Atticus playing a full powered Red Eyes deck quite easily. And what's good about that is his signature monster was Red Eyes Darkness dragon and he'll be able to play the upgraded forms of that we have red eyes darkness metal dragon which is a really good card let's use special summon the dragon type monster out and as well we've also got red eyes flare metal dragon which is a good burn xyz monster my overall problem with the red eyes archetype is it's not well defined it wants to be too many things perhaps that's what it wants to do it wants to be a deck that can do a little bit of everything burn seems to be its ideal playstyle. so because of this you've got cards like black comet dragon slash dragon black skull dragon feels more joey wheeler kind of card and obviously things like red eyes dark dragoon that's definitely a joey wheeler yuki kind of card so he's not allowed to play that it's banned anyway so it's fine he can play swing of memories if he really wants he's got the original red eyes in there so fine with me Chaz princeton this is the tough one so Chaz played three specifically iconic decks throughout the course of the Yu-Gi-Oh series he played ojama vwxyz and arm dragon he could make a deck of any of these. An Ojama deck. Okay, I could see a modern version of that. It's had new support. A VWXYZ dragon deck. We've got the ABCs now and everything. So yeah, we could play that if we wanted to. Arm dragon deck. Arm dragons have had a brand new retrained version of themselves called the Arm Dragon Thunders. And it's a big reference to Majumi Fun Thunder and all that from the... Uh, the Japanese so you could make any of those individual decks or which I'm absolutely allowed to say he's actually allowed to merge all three together it's a viable option I think the deck type is literally called Ojama Arm Dragon XYZ deck he has cards like Arm Dragon Catapult Dragon that's Arm Dragon and VW XYZ sort of mixed together kind of thing we have cards like Ojama Pajama which references Arm Dragons and light machine monsters but that we have Ojama Simulation which lets you get out the, the boss monster and the extra deck and everything. Uh, they're all over the place. You can play it however you want. Obviously, iconically, Ojama is the true calling of Chaz. However, if I had to pick one specific archetype, I think I'd like Chaz to play Armed Dragons. I think they're pretty decent. They've got some good cards in them as well. I think the Armed Dragons are decent enough that you could play with them. So I guess that's my choice. Bastion Misawa. Now, this is our first wacky character. He doesn't really have a true theme to a deck i guess he played a few different decks throughout the course of the series so 
His most iconic card to me is Water Dragon, even though he only used it like probably once or twice or something like that. Water Dragon did get an upgraded form. The It's part of the chemical archetype because he used Bonding H2O with Hydrogedons and Oxygedons to make Water Dragon. Uh, it's all about chemicals. He's the, not the mathematician, he's like the technical guy. So instead now we have Water Dragon evolved into Water Dragon Cluster. We also have some new chemical monsters and new chemical cards like Bonding D2O and DHO uh, and Deuterion. I think I've said his name right. So, I mean, like, yeah, you could play that. It's not good at all. It's a shame it hasn't been expanded more. And obviously in the intro, there was the Water Dragon and Fire Dragon next to Bastion. It's a shame we never got more chemical Fire Dragon monsters and stuff to support the deck. This is an archetype that definitely could see some more support, which would be really cool. But I guess Bastion did play like a kind of magnet themed deck in one of the episodes as well. So, I mean, we could give him the Magnet Warriors. Magnet Warriors have some really cool monsters like Berserkion and everything now, so that's an option. However, this is just a personal preference of mine. If I could pick Bastion's deck for him, I would give him... It's not a good deck, I'll admit. And it's a Gemini deck, so you know it's really bad. It's called Chem Critters. I really like them. I wish they were better because I just think they're really cool and really cute and I like their thing. But it's, they've got, like they're like Carbo Crab. It's like carbon it's, and it's, it's got the symbols and you mix the different elements together to make bigger monsters. I think it's really cool, but no one cares about it. It's such a shame, but I do like it. Can we give uh, Bastion that one, please? Chumley Huffington. Chumley played an Australian themed deck. Uh, he koalas, basically. There's no real koala modern supports or a chumley themed deck so it's, it's not like you could give chumley an archetype or anything like that it's been modernized the the closest thing you have is Ayers rock sunrise is a card that he'd absolutely play because this was the card that he designed in the anime for a australia themed deck you just have to give him like a beast deck really a, a deck full of beast cards and i don't really know like an australian beast themed deck that exists in the Yu-Gi-Oh game if you know anything let me know but i guess we just need to give him a beast themed deck and if that's the case i'm just gonna give him tri brigade <laughs> he doesn't deserve tri brigade even in the slightest but sure tri brigade doesn't really fit him he'll have to play something else i don't really know another beast themed deck though it's kind of lost on me. I don't know. I don't know what to give Chumley. You'll have to tell me in the comments. Viper. Now, Viper played a Venom deck in the anime. And unfortunately for him, Venom has never had any new support. And the boss monsters, Phenomenon and Venomenaga, cool in theory, way too slow in reality. They've never had like retrains or anything like that yet. So mm, Venom is not a viable deck option for him. Even though I will say the card Snake Rain is a really good card and we're going to hold on to that one if we can. I think for Viper with his uh, snake themed deck, we're just going to have to give him a generic reptile deck, which yeah, there's some decent generic reptile decks you can play. Like what's a decent card in that? Reptilian Echidna? That's not too bad. There's, there's a bunch of different ones you can play as well in there. It's all about getting your opponent's monsters down to zero attack or something like that. It's like poisoning them. So that fits in his theme. If I had to give him like an archetypal reptilian deck, I guess there's a deck called Ogdoadic. It's got kind of like a like an Egyptian snake theme to it. So I don't know if that really fits his persona because he's like a military dude as well. But eh, Ogdoadic or more specifically, just a generic reptile deck for him. Sartorius. So obviously Sartorius played Arcana Force. He would play a modern day Arcana Force deck. Arcana Force has had, like, no support, really. Very recently, they've had some support. Like, they've had a new Searcher card for the Field Spell, I think, and some other card that does something else. I can't remember. I'll put them on screen now if I can find them. Arcana Force has not aged gracefully, I will admit. They're a flawed deck with a not great mechanic. It's an interesting mechanic. I like the whole right side up, right side down. It's just a flip, but... Yeah, the Field Spell's not too bad. Light Barrier, like gives you the guaranteed good stuff and of course the boss monster of the arcana force zawaldo uh, is very very good so basically shut off your opponent's turn so um it's a good card since they had new support he can play an arcana force deck i mean there's some decent cards like temperance and stuff so we'll see how it goes the darkness 
This is the final antagonist of the entire Yu-Gi-Oh! series, the embodiment of darkness and everything. He played a darkness archetype, which sadly has never been brought into the real world. I think only one card has, which is Darkness Neosphere. So it's a shame we haven't got the rest of the Darkness monsters. An iconic card that the Darkness played was Zero and Infinity. These trap cards that when they activate, if there's a bunch of these specific spells in between them, they like flip up, they activate certain effects and these cards will shuffle. So when they activate, it depends what's in between them. So you could have, I think three in between them, two in between them, one in between them or something like that. So that's how they work. It's, it's quite a cool, interesting gimmick and everything, but they never had support. So we'd have to give them something else. I don't know. Like you'd give the Dark World people like Ron, Mad King of Dark World. You'd give him the Dark World deck. So you can't really give him that. Just a Fiend deck, I guess. Some sort of Darkness Sphere. Vanity. Maybe he plays like a Vanity anti-meta deck or something. Why not? Yusuke Fujiwara. This guy is such a shame that his archetype's never been supported. Uh, he played a clear deck in the anime. Uh, the clear deck's gimmick was that the clear monsters, they're like inside these glass cases kind of thing. These clear cases, if you will. Uh, so they have no attributes. They're attributeless. The reason that's good is because the field spell, Clear World, it punishes players for having attributes on their field. Depending on what attributes it is, it's a different type of punishment. So like a fire attributed monster would cause the player to take a thousand damage or something like that. I think a wind monster, uh, you have to lose a card in your hand or show your hand or something. There's all different kinds of like punishments, but it's such an interesting mechanic. And the cards that they made in the real world is just clear world, which I think has a really steep maintenance cost or something like that. And clear vice dragon, which still has an attribute and it defeats the point of the whole archetype and everything. So this is an archetype I'd really like to see modernized, brought out and has support and plays like it does in the anime. Um, it doesn't exist at the moment yet. So I don't know what I'd give uh, Yusuke. I mean, like his other signature card is Honest. So you can give him a light based deck, maybe a fairy deck or something. Or you could play some sort of weird attribute punish deck or something. So I don't know. I don't really know what you'd give him in the modern day. Tyranno Hasselbrew. Now, unfortunately, there's no like Tyranno themed archetype or anything like that. He just played generic dinosaurs. So we're just going to give him a generic dinosaur modern deck, which there's a lot of really good generic dinosaur modern decks, for being completely honest with you. Baby Cerasaurus, Miscellaneousaurus, some really good cards. Obviously, his, one of his signature cards was Superconductor Tyranno. There is a modern day version of that called Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. It's really, really good. And I think there's a Black Tyranno modern version, but I might be making that up. But yeah, there's loads of different things you can play with Tyranno Hasselbury. I think Fossil Dig is an iconic card that sees a lot of playing dinosaur themed decks and is a card that he used as well. So it fits the character and I think that's fine for Tyranno. Jim Crocodile Cook. Similar to Tyranno Hasselbury, he also plays a dinosaur themed deck, but he actually has an archetypal theme with his, the Fossil Archetype. And the Fossil Archetype, when it came out, I don't think it's ever been supported since. So I think we've still got the same Fossil monsters we had when it originally came out. They're fun. I like their gimmick and everything, being able to fuse with the opponent's graveyard and your graveyard to make these fossil monsters and everything, but they're not great. They need more support, but you can absolutely play a fossil themed deck. And of course, fossil diner Pachycephalo. Um, it doesn't fit the theme of fossils at all. I don't know why they changed its effect so drastically. This monster sucks to play against. If, they, if you, if you want to play that in the deck, he's more than welcome to, but I wouldn't recommend it. Jesse Anderson. Obviously, Jesse's going to play a Crystal Beast deck. Crystal Beast's popular archetype. They've had not a ton, but quite a bit of legacy support. They've got new boss monsters like Overdragon and the new Overdrive Rainbow Dragon that came out with the scripture deck, I think it was. We also have two new Pendulum Crystal Beast monsters and a new main deck Crystal Beast Rainbow Dragon. Now, if you wanted to go down a evil Jesse Anderson route, they did actually bring out the Advanced Crystal Beasts monsters. Now, I've never played the Advanced Crystal Beasts, nor have I ever actually seen anybody play them. So I actually don't know how viable they are, but I guess you bell Jesse would play Advanced Crystal Beasts, but I don't know how good they are. I don't know. 
to find out. Axel Brody. The volcanic archetype, one of those archetypes that never had support for decades and decades, and then all of a sudden just sort of support got memed into existence. So yeah, we've got decent volcanic support. The deck isn't great in modern day, but it's playable. We've got a brand new Blaze Accelerator card, if you want to do that. We've got a brand new boss monster. Adrian Gecko. Now, Adrian played two different decks. He played a Cloudian deck and a Exodia deck. Really annoyingly, Cloudians have never, ever, ever had any support. They have absolutely no love. And in his final duel, he played a monster called Fog King, which feels like a part of their archetype. Or the Fog Monsters could have been like a better version of his Cloudians or something. Never got made, never got brought into reality. So I can't really suggest him play Cloudians. He also played an Exodia deck, focusing on Exodia, Exodius, the ultimate Forbidden Lord. I know that Exodia's had brand new support, which is really, really good. Unfortunately, I gave the Exodia deck to Grandpa Muto. So am I allowed to do that for a later generation? Can I just give them a deck from a previous generation? I guess I can. So yeah, I guess a better modern day version for Adrian Gecko would be the modern Exodia deck that is coming out soon because it's really good. And I talk about it more in, I think, my Exodia video that I did recently. So you can check that out if you want to learn more about it. Crowler. Crowler played an Ancient Gear deck. Ancient Gears have had a bit of support. They're, they're quite a popular archetype. So they've had brand new cards. Really safe. New boss monster that Crowler could play as well. It's a really good card. But really recently, they had more support, which makes them a bit better. They've even got a, an Ancient Gear monster, which is a homage to Valiant Crowler himself. So yeah, it's just all about slamming into your opponent with these huge monsters. They can't do anything about it as well because spells and traps are negated during the declaration of the attack, I think it is. Ancient Gear Golem, iconic card with Crowler. It still sees play. There are different versions with like mechanized melee and everything. But uh, yeah, a, a Ancient Gear deck. It still needs a little bit more support. You gotta be careful with it because there's some, some quite powerful cards in there, but it's good. Kagamaru. Kagamaru, I guess, could play a modern day Sacred Beast deck. Sacred Beasts have had enough support now yeah you could play the sacred beasts now i know kankimaru didn't use armatal the chaos phantom and armatal the chaos phantom's upgraded form that was yubel using the sacred beast deck you can get away with it though there's probably a few characters i'm forgetting and obviously we've got all the shadow riders like titan played a pandemonium deck with the arch fiends i don't think they've had any new support i actually don't know give him like a chaos deck or something i'm not too sure camula with some of her vampire cards, just give her a, a vampire deck. They have a whole support thing now of it. Vampires actually pretty decent. Big boss monsters, give them that. Tanya, what did Tanya play? She played Gladiator Beast, didn't she? This brand new Gladiator Beast cards. So that's fine. Give her that. Abydos the third. He played like an Egyptian themed deck. The cards he played never had any support or anything like that on modern versions. So just give him some form of Egyptian themed deck. I don't really mind what you give him. Donzalug, unfortunately the, is it the Dark Scorpions? I forgot the name of them. Never any support. They're not good. They're not worth playing. He'd have to play something else. They're like burglars, aren't they? Or something, or like criminals. What? What's um? What's the archetype called where they're like spies or something? That's kind of fitting. Unless there's a, a thief. Time thieves? Give him time thieves? I don't know. Amnail Helios. Never really got any support, but you could play like a Banish deck for Amniel. So you could play the Helios cards, but then you're also making use of Macrocosmos to punish opponents, banishing their cards. Yeah, I could see that. I think that we've covered the basics. We've had a good bit of time spent on this. Hope you didn't mind my rambling. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys. Hope you all enjoyed. Catch you later. Maybe we can do this for 5Ds as well. Let's see.